versus Satan. Yes, Satan. Because these leftists are evil. Yo, motherfuckers, what's up? Hey, yo. Okay, so give me a sec. Camera's not on yet. I'm setting up my web. Oh, shit. I'm a little high right now, so like, just throwing that out there. I know that's disqualifying for my future political run. You know, they're gonna scrape by these archives and they're gonna be like, this person was high on stream. And that's gonna be me and then my face is gonna be on that. And people are gonna see that in their mailbox. Um, but what's poppin' y'all? How's everyone doing? Um, I'm gonna turn my heating apparatus down in case that makes noise. Um, but uh, y'all, what's poppin'? Um, I had an interesting morning and, uh, and, uh, yeah, so I had an, I had, okay, so I had an interesting morning, yada, 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 now I'm tripping on pills. So, uh, <laughs> I'm drinking my coffee and Max the dog is here. Max the dog, you can't see Max the dog because my pillow's in the way, but Max the dog is licking himself once again because that's what Max the dog does. He's a licker. Uh, not to be confused with the Resident Evil 2 monster, who is also in Resident Evil 5. Um, and may also be in other games, um, but I'm not entirely sure. I think they're in like Code Veronica or something, but I've never played that one. Um, but anyway, hello Lilith, how you doing? Uh, and hello KM Fegged, how's it going? Do I know you, KM Fegged? Do I know you? Are you my new friend? I'm sorry if I don't, if I, you know, if you've interacted with that username before and I just forgot. Um, every once in a while, I like, uh, I like doing drugs, so, today's the day. Um, so, but yeah, um, totally legal, of course, you know, just caffeine, I love caffeine, totally legal substance, uh, CBD, totally legal substance, huge fan, but I'm not on YouTube, so, who cares, right, I can say that, uh, I can say that, right? I'm not on YouTube, so what are you gonna do? Um, today's topic, I've got a bunch of news stories here. Um, not sure how many of them I'm gonna do. Uh, cause I, this morning I had, I just want really wanna talk about my, my day, honestly. Um, so that's kinda what I wanna do. Um, but I wanna like give it a little bit more, get some more people in here, um, before I do that. But uh, how's everyone doing? I hope everyone's okay. Uh, I'm having a pretty good day so far. So again, I'm sorry if I'm slow. I'm sorry if I'm uh, uh, slow, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, so <coughs> let me, my fucking headset was fucked up with my hat here. Uh, hey, it's just be cool. Yeah, I'm sorry for being a little late today, but uh, I went to the food bank this morning um, because I'm an American. And uh, so that took a little li bit longer than I thought. And then when I got home, I was pretty hungry. And uh, and uh, yeah, so. But I, while I was waiting for the food bank, I was listening to AM radio. Um... You know, so I live in North Carolina, for those of you that don't know. Um, I live in North Carolina. So, in North Carolina, it's a southern state, but it's not like the most southern state. It's not like, you know, Georgia. You know, which coincidentally went blue and North Carolina did not. But, you know, my point, my point is I'm in the Virginia, North Carolina section. That's where I live. And so, I get stations from Virginia. I get stations from North Carolina. Um, and I was listening to AM radio this morning. Yes, this is what I'm going to talk about, Matt. So I'm listening to an AM radio show. And the guy on the AM radio show that they're interviewing is a never Trumper. Um, now, this guy who they're interviewing. Now, keep in mind, I'm waiting in the car for like an hour. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, food banks, the way it works here is, you know, you drive up and you get in line. Um, and then the food bank opens at a specific time. So you want to get there like as early as you can so that you can be like first in line and then get the fuck out, um, is the idea. Uh, so, you know, we get there and it's like, we get there around eight and they open at nine. 
So, uh, there was about, I would say, like on a count, maybe 20, maybe 25 cars in total. Uh, we were like third. So that was pretty cool. So, but anyway, so we were waiting in line for the food bank. Hey, Mud Joe, how's it going? We were waiting in line for the food bank and, uh, I was like, you know what? I'm going to listen to AM radio. Now, obviously I don't drive. I don't, I don't know how to drive. I've never driven before. Um, so I'm with my family. And so I have to convince the members of my family that will be unnamed for privacy reasons, but I have to convince the members of my family to let me listen to AM talk radio. Um, so I turn on this station and you know, I'm flicking through, you know, like I, I, I don't know any of the AM stations, so I'm flicking through and I write down a couple ones that sounded like they could be good. So now I've got a, like a file on my phone. Um, by the way, my phone's in my coat pocket. I forgot to take it out. So that's fun. Hopefully I don't need it for anything, but, um, Hey, Mr. Freak Glitcher, I forgot. I, or yeah. So I, I wrote down a couple on my phone. And then I eventually found one that wasn't on commercial and they were interviewing this never Trumper who was like a, tr he, like he said he voted for Trump, but like he hates Trump and that Trump is a child. So it's like the Trump is the lesser of two evils kind of character, you know, like that kind of character. Um, and so this guy is talking about how the economy is like, you should be buying gold how like they actually they actually talked about cryptocurrency actually and i'll get into this in a little bit um so like this guy was talking about like if the democrats take the senate you know that's a good thing because then they can get more bipartisan legislation and this guy was like this guy is like a total dweeb this guy was like well actually i like the idea of a senate being 50 50 because that means it's the ultimate bipartisanship right like Again, this is AM Talk Radio in North Carolina. Um, and so like, you know, and then the live callers start, right? Now you're like, okay, so they're on the radio. Play the radio. Leave the record player on at night. Hold up. Let me get the quote. I'm sorry. Let me just do that. It's not that they don't want to help. They don't want, they don't know quite what to do. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. The, 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 phone. the phone. Make sure the, the kids, kids hear words. words. The fucking I love that the 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 phone. What does that mean? Who knows? Um, but yeah, having a fifty finite fifty fifty Senate, um, means that it's the ultimate Senate because then both parties have to agree or whatever, right? Whatever the fuck, like who knows, right? But then the callers start, and I had a half a mind to call, but like I didn't want to like do that in the car with my family, um. But I think what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start calling these radio stations like in my area and just like asking them questions. I was like thinking, I was like, what if I just called this guy and asked them about the 40 million pending evictions? Like, what would they have to say about that? Because like these guys are talking about how the stock market's doing great. And again, this never Trumper dude actually mentioned cryptocurrency. It was like, yeah, like, you know, like get gold, even like, you know, cryptocurrency has been doing well. I don't understand it. I think it's dumb, but you know, it's doing well. That's what they say. Um, and, uh, so I was really tempted. It's like, yeah, they think the economy is amazing. Um, and I was like, what if I just asked them? Yeah, there's 40 million people that are going to be evicted in like a week. Like, I don't know. It's so, like the idea that like, that's not on people's minds. In, in my opinion, in my estimation, it's just like, what? Right? Like, that's bizarre. It's super strange. So then the callers start. And uh, one goes by. And, like, the first one is like, I'm 50, I'm 55. And I'm thinking about taking an early retirement. Right? And then the guy, the never Trumper, I guess his job is like he's a stock analyst or something. I don't know. The, I guess the, the subject was they're talking about stocks and the stock market. Um, and, like, all that crap. And this guy, I shit you not. This guy was like, don't retire early. You're doing a disservice to your country. You should be working more until you you hit the actual age of retirement. This guy was like, but you know, like, you know, I have injuries, you know, I could do early retirement, you know? And the guy was like, you're doing a disservice to your country if you retire early. You're not being a useful enough member of society. And then like, I'm thinking here, it's like, 
the guy who called is like 60. He or he's like 58, 59. Like he says, like I'm 58. You know, whatever. I think it was 58. Um, and in some industries, I think you can retire before the age of 65, right? And so it's like the idea that you're like 58 and you're listening to AM radio in the morning, right? You probably think that Trump won the election or something, and this guy's like a never Trumper. So like, you know, you're trying to like, you know, you're 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 a reasonable Republican, right? Like. So you're just asking, and this fucking guy sitting in a radio station who is presumably a millionaire or something, like, at least rich enough, because, like, they, they, they talk to themselves up about how they're, like, a stock trader and, like, they do all this Wall Street shit. This fucking radio station jackass in my t- town or in an adjacent town was like, no, don't retire early because if you do... You are doing a disservice to your country. And again, I've listened to AM talk radio. I've listened to Republicans on and off. I've listened to them do so much nonsense, right? But I was like, I was shocked at the idea that this like millionaire is going to tell this guy not to retire a couple years early. Not because of penalties. Not because of, uh, you know, you'll get less money out of retirement. Not because, you know, anything else that's like an actual practical reason. But because if you do so, you're doing a disservice to your country. I was shocked. I was shocked, right? Um, but again, I shouldn't be shocked. I really shouldn't be shocked. Um, but it was like, I knew that this was going to get funny. Right? I knew. I was in. I was in for a fucking... I was in for a doozy is what I knew. So... You know, another caller goes by and like, this is like some wifey, you know, their, their husband is a stock trader or like, you know, one of those per- people that has like four shares of Tesla and thinks they're like, a, yeah, I'm a stock trader, right? Like I've got like, you know, a thousand dollars in Tesla. It's like, yes, look at me, right? You know, those people who think that like, oh, the stock market, the Dow is at an all time high. Well, that's good for me because I've got like. 400 bucks of stocks, right? Like, these are the kind of people that I'm describing here. Um, and then this guy goes on a rant about how, like, Tesla is, like, the fact that Tesla is worth more than Ford and General Motors combined, I think, I think it's fake. I think that this is a scam. And I'm not, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, you know, I'm actually, like, holy shit, I agree with you there. But, like, I'm just, you know, but I'm sorry if I'm a little disheveled. Um, I'm doing multiple substances right now, but, um, I was shocked. I was shocked at how, like, just brazen. And then someone calls, or no, 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 it was the the main host was talking about the Electoral College. So it wasn't a caller. They just shifted topic from the stock market to the Electoral College, which, for those of you that don't know, did the official whatever the fuck yesterday and the new cope the new cope is that oh well the electors haven't officially elected yet they were just chosen and really the official election is january 6th when they actually cast their ballots right that's the new cope the right wing cope now um is it no 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 january 6th is the official date like gotta stop the steal duh gotta stop the steal so they shift to talking about the electoral college and this guy again i said he's a never trumper and i'm impressed the guy called donald trump's behavior post-election childish he said it was embarrassing and he said he feels uh that the republican party is in a bad position because they look weak and they look childish right so this guy's got some relatively incendiary words for North Carolina AM talk radio. Um, and so then the great reset call. So again, I'm sitting with my family, right? And I'm talking to them like they're normal people, right? My family's relatively normal people. Um, they listen to me babble about politics when, when I do, but they, other than that, most of the politics they get is from like TikTok, you know, like scrolling through TikTok and then maybe you see like a 17 year old 
talk about like how you know like the history of the civil war or something like you know like there's a lot of those like little educational 10 second tiktoks right but like my point is these are not like people that are like follow the news every day these are not like their only political things are for me and then like sometimes they scroll through tiktok so like i'm telling them it's like you know like i'm waiting for the call there's going to be a guy who calls i guarantee you there's going to be a guy who calls about stop the steal And then, like, you know, the COVID vaccinations that are just starting, like, someone's going to talk about how, like, the vaccines have microchips. I guarantee you this is going to happen because I'm trying to convince them to listen to AM talk radio with me. I'm trying to say, like, no, it's worth it. I promise. It's going to get good. Just wait. Um, And then someone calls. And then it's like, hi, I'd like to to ask and see what y'all think of the great reset. And so, like, I'm, (laughs) you know, I'm sitting here. I'm ready. Right, I'm ready for this. I'm totally ready for this. The Great Reset. For those of you that don't know, The Great Reset is like this conspiracy that like the vaccines are going to have microchips and they're going to like kill everyone and then there's going to be like a human society is going to reset essentially. So it's like there's going to be some sort of like apocalypse scenario or some scenario where like the whole world order is going to change overnight or something. Right, that's like the the concept of the Great Reset. So someone calls in, right? And again, the topic, so they're talking about the Electoral College and then they also like mentioned the COVID vaccine at some point, right? So it's like someone calls in, it's like, I'd like to know what you're talking about on the Great Reset, right? And it's like, and then I'm like, oh, here we go, here we go. And so I start explaining to the family members in the car with me It's like, yeah, the Great Reset is where people think that there's going to have microchips and, like, everyone's going to die. And then, like, literally, as I'm explaining that, right, the guy literally says, like, like, okay, so the the Never Trumper on the radio station and the host are like, what's that? I've not heard of that. Let us, like, you know, tell us what it is and then we'll tell you what we think. Right? Reasonable. And then the caller was like, well, yeah, it's like, you know, the, the COVID, the vaccine, it's gonna, it's not actually a good vaccine. And then, you know, and then the 5G... And then, like, you know, it's like how Bill Gates wants to use the vaccine. And and then, like, their phone started cutting out. You know, like, the classic right-wing crazy person is, like, as soon as they're in the middle, their phone cuts out. Right? So, like, their phone starts staticking. And then the never-Trumper guy is, like, like, I can't really understand what you're saying. I, you know, I don't really, I don't really get that, any of that. And then, like, they try to get the guy back on the thing. And, like, the guy's just, like... You can't really hear anything and the quality of the radio. I wish I could hear more and I wish I knew what this guy was saying. So then they like drop the call. Right. And the guy like the really everything that got out was that the guy was like the vaccine's going to not be so good. And then Bill Gates and then like microchips and then like the new world order was basically all that was audible. And so the never Trumper guy was like, that sounds like some crazy stuff, but I didn't really understand it because of the quality. So who knows? Right. And they just move on. And I'm sitting here thinking like, I need to call this radio station. I need to call this radio station and I need to not call this radio station to ask about 40 million evictions. I need to call this radio station and I need to see if I can bait these people into like saying some really dumbass shit. So like over the next like couple weeks, I think I'm going to try to like do some local AM radio prank calls. And I want to know what y'all think about that. Is anyone interested in me doing like AM radio prank calls where like I pretend to be a right winger and then like I ask them like some extremely incendiary questions and then just see if they take the bait. I'm going to try to find as many AM radio stations as I can and just go for it. Call New Jersey 101.5. I should. Is Ray Rossi still at 101.5 or did he quit? It was uh, Ray Rossi and Craig Carton. Right, Mudjo? I know Craig Carton got sent to jail, though. But I, I don't know if Ray Rossi's still there. I think that was his name. Carton and Rossi. No, Craig went to jail. The other guy, the co-host, remember? Remember when Craig went to jail and then Ray Rossi wrote that, uh, that fucking, that article 
And it was like, yeah, this guy was a jerk, and everyone hated him except for me. <laughs> Maybe don't call in to be a prankster and just try to debate. I don't know. I don't know. The thing is, I can, like, there's so many different AM stations. I could, like, have one for prank calls and one for debates, right? Like, I could try to find one with, like, the most, like, reasonability and then maybe debate them. And then, like, find one that's a little bit more batshit and then just try to bait them with prank calls. I think, you know, like, that- there's uh, so many of them. There's so many AM stations, I'm sure I could have, a, like, you know, chart it out a little bit. Rossi and Carton were grace greatly replaced. I remember back when I was a kid, that Craig Carton guy um, went on TV every single day with what he called Project La Cucaracha. And this was after 9-11. I remember this because I was like six years old, seven years old. So he went on TV every day and he would talk about on the radio every day about Operation La Cucaracha. If you work with an illegal Muslim, you have to out them to the government. And if you work with an illegal immigrant, like an illegal Mexican, you have to out them to the government. This guy was on New Jersey 101.5 every day talking about Operation La Cucaracha where it was going to be taking back America. Do you not remember that, Munjo? That guy was crazy. And like, I didn't know, I didn't know what any of that meant at the time because I was like six or seven. Um, but that's something that's like, you know, one of those things where it's like, you don't know anything about it, but you remember the words and the details. And then later on, you get that post analysis. But yeah, that was like one of the big controversies that I think led to him getting pushed out at some point. Fuck it. Because I remember, I remember my mom, we, we had that, we used to like, you know, watch the news in the morning. And my mom would be like, that's the guy from the radio when he came on. And he was talking about La Cucaracha. And I remember that because it was like, oh, he's, you know, saying Spanish. And that, I thought that was cool at the time or something. Dennis and Judy are still there. Dennis and motherfucking Judy, dude. One of these days, I'm going to have a pilgrimage back to New Jersey, my Joe. And I'm going to call Dennis and Judy. <laughs> I used to listen to, I remember Dennis and Judy really well, actually, um, because for me, right, it was all based around school, right? So in the morning, it was Jim Gerhardt, right? And I think, Mudjo, didn't you send me a, an article, like, recently? I think he retired or something. Whatever. But that guy was the morning guy, Jim Gerhardt, right? And I remember he had that super cartoony voice. So, like, every time I heard his voice... I, like, associated it with a Wawa egg and sausage sandwich. Because what my mom would do is she would drive me to school and we'd stop at Wawa, get an egg and sausage and cheese sandwich, which, you know, God forbid now, right? I'm a vegetarian. But at the time, I wasn't. And so she would go into Wawa and I'd be in the car by myself listening to good old Jim Gerhart. But then Dennis and Judy, for me, that was when... You know how I, I mentioned I had chronic illness as a kid, right? So whenever I'd stay home, right, my mom would always go to work. She would go to work like an hour after she dropped me off at school, right? So like, some she would bring me to work with her sometimes um, before she trusted me staying at home by myself. So I remember her bringing me to work and then so... When, when, you know, when I stayed home from school, it would be we listened to Dennis and Judy. And I would listen, I would just, like, chill in the break room with 101.5 on. And obviously, I, you know, I was, like, eight years old. I didn't understand anything about what they were saying. But, you know, I remember their names. But anyway, um, today's a little bit of a rambly. You know, I'm just kind of chilling here. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk more about the food bank experience. Um, on today's app. So... I kind of got carried away with the AM radio thing. But, uh... Dennis and Judy seem to get more unhinged over the years. I mean, I think that's what everyone has been doing, is been getting more and more unhinged. Um... More and more unhinged. But yeah, JL in the Discord server says, Not on Twitter, but prank call them and destroy them with facts and logic. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, if I'm going to prank call them, I would prefer to be a repeat caller. Like, that's the thing is, I don't want people to recognize my number and put it on a blacklist. 
So, like, I want to have radio stations where I just prank call them. Um, but, like, in a way that it's, like, I want to bait them into saying ridiculous, offensive, and racist garbage. But in the way of, like, oh, I'm a fan. It's, like, yeah, I'm just... I read this on the internet, you know, like, my my brother-in-law, like, reposted it on Facebook about something called, like, you know, Save Our Children or something. You know, that's what I want to do. That's, like, and then, like, a couple, use Google Voice, exactly, exactly. But I, I, my, that is irrespective of my point. Um, my point being, I want to do, I want to be a repeat customer, is my point. Like, I want to call them as a different, or maybe the same concerned citizen with different conspiracy theories and then just see what they buy like because i'm super interested in that um i'm just super interested in that um but yeah so what i think i'm gonna do is over the next couple days is just gonna listen to more am radio i'd never really done it before um in this in this city I, every once in a while but my family usually doesn't let me uh, change the radio stations, but that was my bargaining chip because we were waiting in line at the food bank. Who is that guy on the Sam Cedar show who does the funny pranks again? Uh, I think they're called Not Even a Show or something. I check them out; they're pretty. They're pretty funny. I should prank call Gorka. That would be good. What will my name be? Of course, I'll be Chaz or Chuz. Chuz, the concerned citizen. Host of the Liberty Loop. Could you imagine if I tried to plug the Liberty Loop? You know what I should do? You know what I should do? I should make, I should do this YouTube channel diversification idea. And I'm leaning more and more in favor of that idea as time goes on. Of the idea of making multiple YouTube channels just for safekeeping and precaution. I should make a channel just the Liberty Loop channel. That's what I should do. The whole channel is the Liberty Loop. That way, I can, like, advertise it on AM radio in my city. And then it's like, yeah, I run a YouTube show called the Liberty Loop. <laughs> and then people will go to the Liberty Loop. And then they will see the videos... And then they won't see any of the Antifa videos or whatever. And then that that's actually a potential... That's a really good idea. Personally, I like the idea of doing the Liberty Loop. And then they check out the channel and it's like, Whoa, this trainee Antifa. I like that. I think that's funny. Um, But also, it would be really funny if I tried to build like an alternate personality for AM Talk Radio. God, that would be funny as hell. Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about the food bank today. And again, I'm sorry if I'm a little bit disheveled. Um, I'm doing various substances right now. So just like, bear with me. Um, I like substances. I like moderating my substances in a recreational fashion. Um, but I also want to say real quick before I talk about the food bank. And stuff like that is I want to say listen to the show on Anchor FM, Anchor.fm slash above it all, no hyphens, no spaces, Anchor.fm slash above it all. Also, I'm going to attempt to build a more organizational apparatus uh, with my follower base. And what I mean by that is I want to find a way, one, I want to get the YouTube strike undone. Um, and so the only way to do that is to get a community of people that like me organized in a way that can actually do anything besides having everyone like the tweet and then say like, yeah, that sucks. Like once every three hours, right? Uh, instead of that, we do a, a hashtag potentially other stuff of that cert, cert, uh, uh, of, of that fashion. But I also want to, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while and it's part of my 2021 plans, is I want to get like a group made. I want to start an organization that is just like an activist kind of organization feed. 
So like, um, for example, I want, like, let's say we get a group, let's say like, you know, back on YouTube for a little bit, you know, I make sure that those people know what's up. Let's say we get like some sort of group where we've got 50 people, right? And let's say someone in this group, you know, has, uh, you know, a problem. Whether it be like, you know, as simple as someone like harassing them on Twitter or YouTube or, you know, as simple as that and they need backup, you know, simple things, you know, just like the whole solidarity mindset. Or, you know, I want to also be able to use it for fundraising. I want to be able to like, if someone in this community or like if, you know, we build an organizational apparatus that would maybe have organic growth irrespective of my YouTube stuff, right? If someone in the community has like a problem, you know, like maybe they're being evicted or something, um, I would like to believe that we could maybe not all contribute like directly because, you know, I'm, cert I'm certain that most of us are poor ourselves, but to have like an organizational apparatus of like, okay, we've got 50 people. We'll set up a GoFundMe for you. And we'll circulate it on social media for you and like that kind of stuff. And then like, I will, you know, let you on my show and we'll help you and talk about that. And we'll get your story out there. Like I want to be able to use my platform in a way that can help people and not necessarily help people just with money. Like, again, if, if there is someone in this group that has enough money to help the issue, that's great. But also it's more about kind of circulation I want to kind of have like a, just some sort of organic organizational apparatus um, that we can utilize for this kind of stuff. And uh, I, like, again, full disclosure, I want to get my YouTube strikes dealt with. And it's like, you know, that's action number one. But I also want to do this kind of stuff just because these are my politics and these are the things that I believe. So if y'all are interested in that, um, it's definitely something over the next couple days I would like to maybe just make a separate Discord server or for now maybe just do a Discord channel on my Discord server where we try to get ourselves on the same page. We try to plot things, you know, and then also we can use this for propaganda purposes in various ways. Like, let's say... There's a social media campaign of some variety, you know, you got like a list, 50 people that are willing to, you know, if you have 50 people that are willing to retweet something, you have 50 people that are willing to share something on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, that goes a long way when it comes to social media campaigns. Um, and so like, I don't know, that's the kind of stuff I'm thinking about building. Uh, but yeah, so I want to talk about the food bank and the title of this episode, even though it's probably not accurate to the total video summary, um, would the glute, would the group include receiving birthday and anniversary presents? Um, I feel like that is a, a trick question. I feel like I'm being set up here, so I'm going to refuse to answer. I'm going to plead the fifth. Um. I'm sorry, but we will be having dues for the group. You must pay $100 a month and that goes to me and there's no transparency. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but anyway, I want to talk about the food bank because uh, today's video title, um, which I forgot. What is it? It's something about being poor. How does it feel being poor? Okay. Okay. So I, I went to the food bank today and uh, we, our family goes to the food bank uh, relatively often we have been even before the pandemic, we would go like every couple of months just to get like, you know, some canned goods that you can use uh, just to make sure that we are not food insecure. Um, it's better to have a cupboard full of, you know, canned beans and then have that for a rainy day. So we would go every couple months. But especially since the pandemic hit, uh, some people in my family have, you know, lost jobs for a couple of weeks uh, until they found new ones. So we've been going to the food bank a lot more often, as I think a lot of people in this country have. Um, 
and just all around the world probably. It's I mean it's a very useful thing, you know, free food. Um but usually I don't go. Usually I don't go um because I can't drive. So like I normally don't need to go, but I just wanted to tag along this morning. Um because I like being a nice person and uh you know, I don't want someone to be there sitting in line for two hours by themselves, you know, like that kind of situation. So I'm a nice person. I wanted to go and I want to describe the process of a food bank because I know that there's a lot of people here. Um, and there's a lot of people that might listen to this video at some point who've never been to a food bank and they may be curious as to the whole procedure. What is a food bank like? Um, so I live in North Carolina. I'm not going to give you any more specific details, but I live in North Carolina. So that's the context. Um, earlier I meant, I'm just going to restart the story. So, you know, I'm sitting in the car, you know, the food bank opens at nine, but you want to get there at like eight because then you get first in line. And when you get first in line, then as soon as the food bank opens, you go in, you know, you get processed and then you get out. That's the idea. Um, and so this is why, uh, I wanted to listen to AM radio because we were just in the car waiting. And so basically there's a side street and like, you know, I live in a relatively small town. So like, it's not like there's highways and everything like, so there's not that many cars as it is, but there's like main roads and then you pull off into a side street and then there's like this kind of like big church like building. Mm -hmm. It's not a church, but it, it kind of looks like a church. It maybe could have been one at some point repurposed. I'm not sure. It could just be like a big fancy building that was reaper. I have no idea. Maybe I should look into this, right? But I have, I have, at this moment, I'm not entirely familiar um, with what the exact uh, history is of that building. Um, and so like, you know, that's in it. And then it has its own parking lot, right? So imagine, right, this is the main road. And then this is the side road, right? This hand here. Now for the audio podcast listeners, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Imagine a T right? And the top of the T is the main road. And then the bottom part of the T is the side road. Now imagine you put another, imagine it's like an F, right? But like an F and a T. So it's got like the full thing at the top, right? But it's got that little thing in the middle of the side road. That's where you line up. And then that goes into the parking lot to this place. Um, and overall we were about like, I think second, third, fourth in line. Um, I think we're third. Um, and uh, there was about 25 or so cars in total by the time that the, the doors opened. And of course, this is like waiting for them to open. So this isn't like total amount of people processed the whole day. They open at nine and then they're open for several hours, right? So then like, you know, there's a lot of people that would go at like, you know, 1130 and then they go and then, you know, like, so this is just like, we're talking about the opening line. There's about 25 to 30 cars. And again, I'm not in a heavily populist area. Um... In fact, let me look up what the population is for my city. So the last population count, which was of the 2010 census. So we'll, you know, we'll see in the update, right? Um, but the last, in, the, in 2010, this city had 18,000 people, right? So let's extrapolate, you know, 25 cars, some of them I saw four people in the car. Some of them I saw three. Some of them I saw two. Um, you know, let's extrapolate 25 cars times three. That's 75-ish people. Um, just kind of waiting there for free food in a city that maybe, I don't know. Again, we'll see whenever the 2020 census is fully published, but we'll see. In a city that's like, that would be what? Let me, let me just bring up the calculator. And again, this is just waiting in line at the morning. Uh, so let's just say 18,000. I don't know if I'm doing this math correctly. I don't know how to do math. I'm sorry. I, my brain's a little fried. But let's just say you got like, you know, a sizable percentage of, um, of the population waiting for food. Uh, and again, it's cold, right? And you know, it, it's, it's just like, there's just everything right now. It's just kind of a disaster. Um, so what happens is we're all in line. We wait, 
cars and then a, a lady comes by and then like knocks on the window steps back and has like a clipboard and asks us who we are you know who we're picking up for you know like that kind of stuff you know if we need help they're really nice they ask us like you know is there anything we can help you with like when it comes to like you know maybe subsidy groups that you can call like you know there's like crisis hotlines and like you know like you know like like charity groups that like you know say let's say you have like children and you know you don't have any heating in your home you can call this number to maybe get like subsidized heating and stuff like that right so they ask if there's a, if there's anything we would need right they're very nice and they do this with every car and I just want to like again huge shout out to the people working in these food banks I am heavily considering volunteering myself the only problem is I don't have a car and I can't drive they are volunteers um, and I, I, I'm thinking about like, maybe when it's a little bit less cold, so make maybe spring, I could walk there. I could totally walk there. I think I'm pretty sure I could walk there. It might take like 30, 40 minutes, but I don't know. It's a whole different story walking there in the cold versus, you know, spring, but I'm definitely considering volunteering that they're really nice people. And, um, and uh, so I just, I want, I want you to understand here what, like, again, if you've never been to a food bank, it is probably the most wholesome form of just like human compassion and solidarity. And I think that that's an important thing to, to, to quantify. I think it's extremely important. So that's why I'm trying to describe this in such a descriptive fashion. Um, but yeah, so they ask us, you know, and then when they're done with all the cars in the line, then they go to the you know first car and then they say all right we're gonna start letting you in and they let people in like a couple cars at a time and so you drive into the parking lot right and it's like a giant u situation so you drive in right and then you talk to another person and then uh you know they also ask a bunch of questions like these people the people that volunteer at this food bank they're just really beautiful and wonderful people like, they all genuinely care, they're all genuinely empathetic, and they all are genuinely doing the best that they can in the situation given to them. And so they're just really nice, and they're asking questions, and there's like, you know, are you everything good for the holidays? Like, you know, how are you doing? Like, you know, and then you develop a rapport. It's like, oh, how's your arm feeling? You know, last time I saw you, you weren't looking so good, you feeling any better? You know... And, and me personally, even though I don't know these, like, they're not my friends. We don't hang out. Like, you know, but it's like just the idea that another human being actually genuinely, like, it's not like it's their job. It's not like they're getting paid on a call center. It's like, do you need anything? You know, like these are people dedicating their personal time to just being very good citizens. So I'm just, I'm trying to be very explicit here. The people that work at food banks, hardcore, like thumbs up. If I had like four arms or something like Tian Shinhan from Dragon Ball, boom. Or does he have six? Does he? No, I think he has four. I'm sorry. Um, can he, if I'm going to reference anime, I got to get it right. And I failed. But yeah, so we roll up here and then the whole idea is like you, you know, you, you talk to the lady, um, you tell him who you are, right? Now, obviously... You, there's a registry with the food bank. Um, and we, I, like I said, we had been visiting, our family has been visiting this food bank on and off since I moved down here. Um, so slightly before the pandemic. And uh, I remember I went there, I think once before the pandemic and I moved here in August um, of last year. So August and then September uh, and the months after that in the order that they come. Um, Went there once and then the pandemic started and then, you know, we, we went there more often. But the registry process, you know, you basically just tell them your name, your income status, that kind of stuff. And then uh, they base how much food and what varieties and, and kinds of food. I don't know the full, full formula. I'd have to actually volunteer there, which, again, I'm, I'm very interested in doing. Um, I don't know the, the full formulas at the moment. Uh, but, you know, you know, so, you know. That's the thing. So I, I, you know, we've already registered. So they, they ask us our name, but if you didn't already have a name, you would have registered. And then you like pop open your trunk and then like people come out with these like grocery carts and then they just like put the food in your trunk. It's like a no contact scenario. Or alternatively, 
you can ask them to leave the cart and then you put the food in the trunk yourself, um, which is what we did uh, because the trunk is a little messy because, you know, certain roommate uh, 6,416 has a lot of junk in the trunk. And I'm not talking about like, you know, ass. I'm not talking about like, you know, something that's good. I'm talking about like, the, there's a lot of garbage, like literal trash. Like I'm, we're talking about like plastic bags full of candy wrappers, like in the trunk of this car, right? So like, you know, we don't want people to sift through that. So so we, we put the food in there ourselves. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to talk about this experience. And if anyone has questions about what a food bank is like, feel free. Even if you if you personally don't have questions, but if you think you want me to elucidate on something that you think is worthwhile, you know, feel free. Um, but, uh, you know, so they, they, they bring out a cart with uh, some stuff. It's like a bunch of bags with cans in it. Um, and then also like pastries and bread, essentially. And then like a gallon of milk. Um, now I have a lot of problems on a personal level with handing out pastries at a food bank. Um, now I personally believe that if, if people are hungry, anything like any food that you can give them is good. Um, but I just like, I've been studying a lot into nutrition lately and it's like, I just, the idea that like the poorest people in this country, like, and you go to a food bank. And a lot of the food, at least in this situation, and I've been to food banks and other locations too, and I've talked to a lot of people that, have, that go to food banks, you get a lot of stuff that's just not healthy from a food bank. And like, that just like perpetuates the, the unhealthy eating style of this entire country in a way that I find to be. Like, I don't know, man. It's just, it, it's some fucked up shit, but... I don't know. Like, again, if you need to eat, you need to eat, right? You know, it's better eating a pastry than not eating at all. But I just find it, like, profoundly sickening that this country is able to provide trillions of dollars, trillions of dollars, the CARES Act was, trillions of dollars for corporations, for big business, for oil companies. And yet the starving people that need to go to food banks aren't getting nutritional food. Like the most nutritional food that we got at the food bank is like a can of chickpeas and a uh, chickpeas and a jar of peanut butter. And I'm not, and again, I'm not trying to say that, you know, I'm really not trying to sound ungrateful or anything. I'm trying to say that like, if we lived in a properly functioning country that actually cared about its citizens in any capacity, you know, we would be providing high quality, nutritional, hot meals to people in these situations, you know, we would be providing, you know, necessary energy so that, you know, the poorest people can, you know, get the help that they need. Because yes, is it better eating a pastry that like is slightly, you know, like basically what happens is like, you got the pastries that they make at the bakery at the local grocery store, and then they have a sell by date. So at the sell-by date, they send them to the food bank, but like the sell-by date is not the same as the food will be poisonous date, like the expiration date. So like, you know, you got like slightly stale pastries. And again, that's better than nothing. But it's just the idea that like, you're, you're giving poor people unhealthy food that only perpetuates health issues, health complications. Like it carb heavy food that they'll burn through the energy in a couple hours, right? It's not satiating, right? And I find that to be heavily problematic. Like the most healthy food is like a can of chickpea, check chickpeas, right? And it's like, you can't eat that out of the can unless you like, unless, did you bring a can opener to the food bank? Like, do you have a fork? Are you really gonna eat it with the fucking like formaldehyde that they store that stuff in? No, like, so you'd have to go home. You'd have to have access to like, you know, a can opener, you know, which, you know, not everyone does, you know, it's a relatively basic object, but not everyone does. Um, and then like also, um, and then you'd have to like, you know, eat it that way. I don't know. My point is like food programs are one of, if not the most essential, the most essential thing when it comes to a community. Um, and again, I've been studying a lot on nutrition. I've been studying a lot on uh, healthy eating. And again, these are statistics that I've cited before. 80 
eight, not eight, not 18, not 0.8, 88% of Americans have a form of metabolic syndrome, 88%. And metabolic syndrome is basically your metabolism is unhealthy and is basically running at a net loss when it comes to uh, your health. So the food that's being processed through your body is doing more damage to you than it is doing like health to you. So like, yes, you are getting, you are alive. You are getting nutrients enough to be alive. But you're not healing damaged cells, and that leads to cancer, right? Metabolic syndrome is a heavily, uh, is heavily indicative of cancer because when you're not cleaning your body out, when your body is not able to build, when your body is not able to heal itself, and your body is first and foremost tasked with how do we handle this poison that I keep getting? When you eat fructose, right, and sucrose and all these other processed sugars that are in almost every pastry, that are in almost every, like, you know, processed food product, right? When you eat this, it does more damage to your liver than alcohol does. Like, fructose and sucrose do more damage to your liver than alcohol. So, like, you know when people get liver failure from being an alcoholic because they drink alcohol all day every day? Well, people are more likely to have liver failure from eating fructose all day every day than they are of drinking alcohol. Because the thing with alcohol is you pass out eventually. There's going to be a point where you get so drunk that you pass out and you stop drinking. When it comes to fruity pebbles, you can eat fruity pebbles all day every day. When it comes to soda, soda is the biggest killer. I swear to God. Soda is poison more than alcohol. When you drink like, oh, like, let's just say you buy a two liter of Coke, right? Keep it simple. That is like, you don't stop, right? Unless you have like the willpower and say like, I know this is damaging to me. I want to treat so I'm going to have a little bit and then like, I'm done. Most people don't do that. Like, I know a lot of people in my family, they'll go through four liters of soda in a day, right? And I'm not trying to call anyone out. Um, but my point here is that like, we live in a society right now. There's a healthcare crisis, right? Our hospitals are overworked and over flooded with COVID patients. I'm gonna take my hat off because it's kind of like making my hair itchy because like it's like splintering and like doing that thing because of my headset. Um, apple juice is awful for you. Apple juice is one of the biggest killers. Orange juice grapefruit juice, apple juice, lemonade, all of these things. People think, oh, it's fruit. It has to be healthy. No. Juice is more dangerous in a lot of ways than soda because at least people have the innate understanding. Yeah, soda's not that good for you. Fruit juice is marketed as of like, oh yeah, this got the healthy vitamins. You're going to get like 2% of your daily dose of vitamin A and then also 3,000% of your daily dose of added sugar. But you got the vitamins, right? That's like the whole thing. It's like, yeah, drinking red wine, it's good for you because it's got those vitamins in there. You know what else is good for me? Eating some grapes. <laughs> like, that's also good for me, right? But I don't... So like, my point is, we have an unprecedented healthcare crisis. And 88% of Americans also have metabolic syndrome, right? 88% of Americans are metabolically unhealthy. Now, when I was a kid, I was always told some people have fast metabolisms. Some people have slow metabolisms, metabolisms. You know what that was? That was a lie. That was a lie propagated by food companies. Food companies have been lying to us literally since the 1970s they've been lying about everything about how dangerous sugar is about how calories work about the necessary amounts of sugar that you should have in a day 
They've lied about fucking everything. All right, and my point here is again, 88% of Americans have metabolic syndrome. 95% of Americans don't get enough fiber, right? So that's 7% of Americans that don't have metabolic syndrome, right? But their metabolism in their body is still not perfect, right? Like there's still a lot of problems with basic nutrition, right? So when you look at these staggering 95% of Americans are not properly feeding the bacteria in their bodies, in their microbiomes, in their intestines, in their gut, 95%. Now, the study I'm referencing here, 95%, is based on reaching 20 grams of fiber in a day, which are the USDA-recommended guidelines. The USDA-recommended guidelines, by the way, also say that the American diet should get 20 grams of added sugar every day. Should get. That's what they say. Like, you know, the percentages on the nutritional labels? Like, yeah, this is 8% of your what you should be getting every single day in added sugar. First of all, you should be getting zero, zero grams in added sugar every day. And like 20 grams is like a massive upper limit. Now, for those of you that don't know, the average American gets around 100 grams of added sugar, mostly in the form of sucrose and fructose on a daily basis. Most of that coming from soda and fruit juice. Um, for example, a can of Coke has like 30 grams of sugar in it. There you go. Boom. That's more than your daily limit. And that's just a can of Coke. And how many people do you know that drink one soda a day? One soda a day is already over your added sugar limit. And how many people do you know that drink two sodas a day? That drink three sodas a day? And then also will eat processed food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner that also has more added sugar in it. So most Americans are eating over 100 grams of added sugar every day. Um, and again, I'm just trying to tie all this together, that this country is fucked. We are fucked. We are fucked, everyone. Like, I, we're fucked. Um, so yeah, 88% of Americans are metabolically unhealthy. 95% of Americans are not properly feeding the bacteria in their body, which when you don't properly feed the bacteria in your body, that means the bacteria don't go away. They're not going away. Those motherfuckers, they're tenacious. They ain't going anywhere. You want to know who's going? You are. Those bacteria, they start eating you. When you don't properly feed yourself, they start feeding on you. Now, first, they feed on the food that you do get. So, when you don't eat enough fiber, fiber is very satiating for them. Fiber, you know, helps scrape everything, get all the nutrients, nutrition that you can out of the food that you eat, right? It just helps. It kind of makes a higher percentage of what you're, you're getting in your body, right? So when you don't properly give yourself the nutrition, your microbiome will start feeding on your food. And so you get less energy out of it. Have you ever wondered why, like, sometimes you can eat, like, a full meal and then be, like, really hungry still? And then, like, maybe still feel a little fatigued? Well, I just ate, you know, a bunch of protein. I should feel, you know, my body should be feeling good. Well, that's probably because you're not eating enough fiber and the bacteria in your body are eating all the food that you're eating. And then they're eating you. Like, I, like that's literally, like, that's the thing. And so what my point here is there are so many underlying health conditions that have exacerbated this pandemic and they're only being repeated. Have we learned anything? Did you know that 88% of Americans have metabolic syndrome? Did you know that 95% of Americans get less than 20 grams of fiber per day? By the way, ancient humans used to eat hundreds of grams of fiber per day. You want to know why? Because all the stuff that tasted good, right? Fruits, sugar cane, right? They were encased in fibrous, like, containers. Have you ever tried to eat, like, a piece of sugar cane? Well, those motherfuckers 20,000 uh, 20, years ago definitely tried to do that kind of shit, right? So our bodies 
are not accustomed to getting zero fiber on a daily basis. Our bodies were not designed to get zero fiber on a daily basis. Our bodies are not capable of surviving very long when we eat this way. And Americans, and for those of you in the UK that are interested, I haven't looked too much into it because I'm an American, but 60 to 70% of a UK citizens have metabolic syndrome as well. Um, so throwing that out there. So you're not in the clear, but Americans we're fucked. Like chances are, if you're listening to me talk right now, chances are like there is a 95% chance. Like everyone's talking about like, Oh, the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine, 95% effective. 95%. Isn't that so great? Well, motherfucker, there is a 95% chance that you listening to me right now have meta- have, uh, don't get uh, enough fiber in your diet. There's an 88% chance that you have metabolic syndrome. You're, a met- metab- you're metabolically unhealthy. And it doesn't matter if you're obese, right? Because meta- your metabolism is irrespective of how, like how much you weigh. It's irrespective of all that stuff, right? So there's a lot of skinny people. They have accumulated liver fat that doesn't show and they think they're healthy. Oh, I'm skinny. I might have like a little muffin top, right? But I'm skinny. I'm good. I'm in shape-ish. Meanwhile, they've got 20% liver fat, right? And that's a huge problem. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm studying a lot more into nutrition. Uh, this is kind of what I've been doing like every night is I'm just kind of like, uh reading this i'm gonna probably buy a couple books on the subject um when i get my next youtube check maybe uh but this is something i'm really interested in because like let's be honest like again let's be honest you listening to me right now you probably have metabolic syndrome you probably don't get enough fiber let's be honest right i've been trying to eat healthy for the last year or so i should make this a series thank you Um, I've been trying to eat healthy for the last year or so, and I'm still probably not with a fully functioning metabolism still. And I've been trying to eat well. I've been aware of these phenomenons, you know, for the last like eight months. Like again, I was 215 pounds in March and now I'm 160. Pretty good, right? That's pretty good. If you ask me. Um, that's pretty good. But again, it's not about weight. It's about properly maintaining an energy balance in your body. And like people wonder, you know, cancer is such a huge problem. How do we cure cancer? Well, I know a way to prevent cancer. Eat healthy. Food is medicine. Why would you put things into your body unless you know what it is that you're going to be doing with it? Right? Again, if I smoke a joint... I am very well aware of the damage to my lungs that the smoke may do. The damage to my brain that the smoke may do. I'm aw- I'm well aware. And then I go in knowing those risks and do it anyway. Now, when you eat a bagel in the morning, a bagel that you probably bought at a grocery store that has added fructose so that it has a longer shelf life, When you eat that bagel, are you well aware of the idea of the damage that that bagel is doing to your body? Probably not. You probably think that bagel is helping you out. It's your breakfast. It's giving you energy. Right? Wrong. Wrong. Um, and that's my problem is again, I was raised on fast food and ice cream. I remember every week, right? Every week, it was grocery day. And we'd get four tubs of ice cream. My mother and I, we used to get two each every week. And I remember, right, going through both of them in one day, more often than not. And my mom used to do the same thing. And this is how I was raised. And this is how a lot of us are raised. 
And like, you know, ice cream every day is bad for you, right? But I was like 14 years old, right? I was depressed, right? Um, I couldn't go to school because I had chronic illness. My mom told me it was my fault that I had chronic illness. So like, that was fucking me up. So I didn't care about eating ice cream every day. I didn't give a fuck. When I was 14, I thought I was going to kill myself when I was 16 or 17. I remember... Like, whenever I would, like, walk on a street, you know, I would consider jumping into traffic. And when I was, like, 15 years old, I'm not trying to give you a sob story here. But my point is, I didn't care about my body or my health at all. And I was a kid. And that should not be my responsibility. It should not be my responsibility to be thinking about killing myself when I'm a teenager and be eating ice cream all day every day. So, shout outs to my bad parenting. Right, like, just throwing that out there. Um, but then, right, I know from talking to a lot of different people online that a lot of people, maybe not as extreme as my scenarios as a kid, went through similar things. Their parents would feed them really unhealthy stuff, especially single parents, right? You know, my mom was tired a lot. She didn't have time to cook a lot. She didn't have time to do this, right? And that and all that. Not to mention, she was never really educated in nutrition. She was never really educated in what all this stuff means because we aren't as Americans. Right? This should be things that we are taught in kindergarten. The dangers of sugar. The dangers of fructose, right? The dangers of not getting enough fiber in your diet. The dangers of like food addiction. This is stuff that we should be taught in kindergarten. But we're not. We're not taught in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade. In fact, we're taught the exact opposite. We're taught that you don't even really need that much fiber. We're taught that cookies are pretty cool and you should be... My, my teachers used to give us cookies when we would get answers correctly as like a treat or something. But it would be like every day. Right? Not every day, but like, you know. I, mean, I had one teacher, I think it was like... I want to say like third grade or so they would hand out treats um for like pop quizzes it would be like maybe twice a week or so and it's like at the time you're like oh i'm a kid hell yeah give me that cookie right and you just don't know the damage that that's that's doing to your body right um and so i don't know I don't know what the grand thesis here is. I'm just kind of spitballing here. But we got to do something about this. And the change starts with one, educating yourself. And, you know, if you're listening to me, that's you're educating yourself right now. You're listening to me and I'm giving you these informations. And you are now aware of them. And you can research them yourself. Um... You know, again, I would try to look up some stuff on metabolic syndrome. Because metabolic syndrome, you can change. You can get a, a, a you can get out of that range of being metabolically unhealthy over the course of like two weeks. You can go from having like a fucked up met metabolism to having a pretty good metabolism in two weeks. Now, does that can you go to having a perfect one in two weeks? Probably not, no. But like my point is, you don't have to become a vegan. You know, you don't have to be, you know, avoid sugar extremist, right? You don't have to. Like, really, like, let's think about this, right? And this is stuff that I, this was my year, this is like the most transformative year of my life, right? Like, it started for me, I wanted to be a vegetarian because one, I've agreed morally with that, you know, for most of my life, you know, since I was like an adult, you know, starting to learn about all this stuff. And then, you know, and plus I was never a huge fan of meat to begin with. And then also I like calling myself a vegetarian. I like the label. It makes me cool and it makes me feel better than other people. And I think that's awesome. So I'm just throwing that out there. Totally not satirical. Um, right. But you don't, you don't have to be a vegetarian. Right, but my thing was like, I wanted to be a vegetarian. This is what I wanted to do. And when I wanted to look up vegetarianism, I knew that there were things that, you know, vitamins, you know, stuff that you get from meat that I would need to find other 
sources for, which, you know, mostly I, you know, beans are a huge thing. Beans are, you know, godsend. Beans are amazing. Um, so when I started looking this stuff up, I was like, you know, there's so much shit that's unhealthy. And then that's what kind of like started my brain into this recent expansion phase over the last, you know, again, eight months or so. Um, and again, it's incredible. Now I dropped out of high school in 11th grade. So maybe in 11th grade or 12th grade is where they tell you about metabolic syndrome and the necessity of eating a well-balanced diet and what that actually means. Maybe they do that in 12th grade or 11th grade. I don't know. But as far as I'm aware, 95% of Americans don't get enough fiber in their diets. It, like if they are teaching us in school anything about this, they're not doing a good job. Right? They're not doing a good job. Now, again, I dropped out of high school, so I don't know. Maybe maybe my school did cover it, but, you know, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Probably not. Right? But my point here is that, like, even if you do eat un unhealthily, every time you eat, right, just be aware of what you're eating, even if you don't make any changes. And this is step one. This is step one. Just if you eat pra like packaged food, look at the label. When you're in the grocery store, before you buy anything, look at the label, right? And again, you don't have to change what food you buy. This is step one is to know what you're eating, right? And I know it's scary. I know there's a lot of work involved, right? But again, here's another fun fact. When you eat fructose, this, you're going to freak out when I tell you this. When you eat fructose, what it does every time is in order to process food, your body needs to age, right? That's what aging is. Every time, like every time your body performs a function, you know, it, it you know, recovers at 99.99% of what it was before. And then that's what aging is. When you eat food with fructose, like, you know, like, or you drink a soda, when your body is metabolizing fructose, your body is aging seven times faster than when you eat something like glucose, which is like a basic carbohydrate. Seven times faster. Now, that's mostly in your liver, which is why people experience things like liver failure, cirrhosis, that kind of stuff. When you drink a can of soda, and especially if you're doing it every day, you are aging your liver at seven times the rate that you would be if you were eating like a regular piece of whole wheat bread. So I'm throwing that out there. Now, again, I'm not trying to sound here like I'm speaking from the cloud. Like, I will smite you if you don't like. I, I'm just, I want everyone that follows me. I want you to be healthy. I want you to be happy. And I want you to be like alive. You know what I'm saying? So just like when you go grocery shopping next time, just look at the nutrition label. I'm not asking you to get different things. I'm going to try to put together more of a nutrition based kind of self-help series, I think. But uh, this is the precursor, I guess. I don't know. I'm just rambling because I'm like, I'm really fucking high right now. So I'm sorry if like, you know, any potential disaster, right? Of of speech or if I look like I'm, I don't know. I'm, I've, I'd like to think I'm relatively normal sounding, right? Like, rel like you know, uh, you can understand what I'm saying, I hope, right? I'm not like, you know, I'm not too far gone or anything. Um, but, uh, what was I saying? Right. Um, again, just look at the nutritional labels. Look at added sugar. Right? So underneath total carbohydrate, it will be like total carbohydrate, 43 grams. Um, and then it will break it down. Dietary fiber, let's be honest, zero grams or maybe one if you're lucky. Let's be honest, you know, you, you know, be honest with yourself. You're not getting anything with fiber in it, right? And then you're going to see total sugars, you know, 35 grams. And then sometimes underneath that, 
will be added sugars, but added sugars are optional. During the Barack Obama administration, added sugars were a required nutritional label thing, but guess what Donald Trump did? Donald Trump's FDA rolled back the Obama provision, which means nutrition labels, the food you eat, is now allowed to lie to you about the amount of added sugars. So they can include an added sugar label that says zero because they don't need to declare added sugars or they can just ignore the added sugar column altogether or bar altogether. So if that's the case, what you need to do is look at the ingredients list. If you see corn syrup, that's sugar. If you see fructose, that's the, the really bad stuff. If you see sucrose, sucrose, if I understand correctly, is a combination of fructose and glucose, which, you know, contains fructose. So, like, look, if those ingredients are anywhere in, like, the top five, you know, you probably got a lot of sugar in there of the added variety. And added sugar is worse than natural sugars because added sugar is more likely to be fructose and it's more likely to be processed fructose. Like high fructose corn syrup, for example. Um, so, like, again, step one. Just whenever you go shopping, please look at the nutrition label. Like, just look at what you're eating. Because I promise you, when you start looking at what, you eat, what you're eating, you will eventually be more compelled to eat slightly better. Right? So, and also, again, if you like macaroni and cheese, let's say that's your thing. You like macaroni and cheese. And you like fucking craft, right? You got to get that craft because that's what your mom used to make you, right? And that's the brand that you look out for. That's the one that when you see it on the shelf, your eye is drawn to it. Fuck craft. Compare and contrast all of the macaroni and cheeses or macaroni cheeses or craft dinners, whatever the fuck you want to call them, you freaks that live in other countries. See which one has the least amount of added sugars just as a science experiment. And try that one instead. Like, it's all about minimizing. It's about weaning yourself off in a way. Now, obviously, the best case scenario would be quit that shit altogether. Added sugar, quit it altogether. But if you don't think you can, or if you want to take a, you know, a learning opportunity, right? Um, first, read all the labels. I would say second, if you, if you want to get some, right, like a specific kind of thing. Like, let's say you want to get pickles. You like pickles. Right? Compare all of them. Get the one with the least amount of added sugar. You can maybe, if you want some sugar, right? Let's say you want to get like a sweet pickle instead of a sour pickle or something. Get the one with the least amount of added sugar. Right? Like, it's all about minimizing the harm. It's about harm reduction. You know, that's why I voted for Joe Biden instead of Donald Trump. Harm reduction. That's why. Now, again, I'm not trying to sound like you should never eat dessert. But let's be honest, right? Maybe you'll grab the Ding Dong and Twinkie combo back pack, right? Every once in a while. And you think, oh, I'm going to be naughty. I'm going to have some dessert. I don't have dessert too often. Let's be honest with yourself. Do you put ketchup on a hot dog? Dessert. Do you put barbecue sauce on your chicken? That's dessert, motherfucker. You're eating dessert. Do you put sugar in your coffee? You know what that is? That's dessert, right? Dessert should be a treat. Dessert should not be for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. When you make a salad, ooh, look at me, I'm so healthy. And you buy that store-bought salad dressing? Motherfucker, you know what's coming. That salad, that's dessert. That's not healthy for you. That's, like, that's how they fucking get you. That's how they get you, dude. Oh, I'm gonna make a salad, I'm gonna be healthy. And then you get the salad dressing and you're an American. You don't read the label. Oh, French dressing, Italian. I love it. That's what my mama used to make. You get that salad dressing, pull it off the label. Dessert. 13 grams, added sugar, fructose. And then again, that's per serving. Let's be honest. You and me were the same. When you are putting salad dressing on your salad, you're not putting two tape. You're not putting two teaspoons. You're not squirting it into a teaspoon and going like, and then, and then like, you know, you're not doing that. No, you're fucking holding it upside down. You got both hands and you squeeze the bottle and do this. 
You are drenching that motherfucking shit in dressing. You are eating dessert. Make your own salad dressing. I can I, I can teach you how to make salad dressing. I make a really bomb Italian salad dressing. Let me just tell you. I don't know. Better yet, find a recipe, get the ingredients, and make it at home. No, absolutely. 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 But my thing is, I, I want to make a series like this. And I want to make it one for poor people. I'm not about that rich yoga wine mom shit. This is a poor person's classroom. Number one, first and foremost, poor people only. I don't give a shit. If you're rich, fuck you. Eat as much sugar as you want. I don't care about you. As far as I'm concerned, if you're rich, eat more sugar than everyone else. You dying sooner, it's a boon for me, right? If you're a boomer, if you voted for Donald Trump and you think the Great Reset is coming, man, I'll buy you some donuts. You know, but like, for I like, and I'm, I'm, I'm obviously I'm joking. Um, I'm, I'm not really joking. But anyway, um, so my point here is like, the best way. Okay, we all hate rich people, right? We all hate rich people. We all think that this world is kind of fucked up, right? We all think capitalism sucks. Your body is being destroyed by capitalism. When you go through the drive through and get a big gulp or whatever the fuck, you get a large soda, you are aging your body seven times faster. Seven times faster. Like, I, like when I found that out, seven times faster, like you'd think make maybe twice, maybe three times fat. You are aging your liver at least, your liver, seven times at an accelerated rate. And again, we're talking about aging, right? Like you can reverse some of that stuff, right? But a lot of the damage is done, right? Like a lot of the, and this is why I'm so like, when I was a kid, cereal, Fruit Loops, chocolate milk, orange juice, ice cream. I had dessert for breakfast. Fruit Loops, dessert. Lunch, guess what I had for lunch? I have those little cupcakes and a sandwich, right? Now the sandwich, I got packaged lunch meats and cheeses that had added sugars in them. Damn right, motherfucker. The bread I had, added sugar. And then I had the cupcake, because you gotta have something, right? You can't just have the sandwich. So you have dessert for breakfast, you got dessert for lunch, and then you got dessert with your dessert for lunch. And then it's dinner time. You get home, maybe before dinner while you're waiting. What are you gonna make? What are you gonna? Open a can of soda. So you got dessert for breakfast, dessert with your dessert for lunch. You get home, a dessert for snack, and it's dinner time. Let's make some spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah, that's right. That's not too desserty, right? But what's that tomato sauce gonna be made of? You get the packaged tomato sauce, the jars. Well, how much added sugar is in that jarred tomato sauce? Look at the label. You will find, like, brands like, like, Prego or Barilla, right? A lot of these brands have, like, upwards of five grams of added sugar per serving. And a jar is, like, five or six servings, right? And let's be honest. Let's be honest. You're not measuring. You're not getting your tablespoon and going, like, okay, well, I'm going to put this much. No, you're dumping the whole fucking jar on your food. So you're getting dessert for breakfast, dessert with your dessert for lunch, you're getting a dessert for a snack when you get home, you're getting dessert for dinner, and ah, oh, we just had a great day of healthy eating, right? We had a great day of healthy eating, right? So let's get, let's, let's eat some ice cream, top it all off. That was my average day when I was a kid, right? When I was a kid, and then I was taught that that's healthy eating. I was taught orange juice in the morning, that's the definition of healthy. It's orange juice. You're getting vitamin D. More like vitamin D's nuts, motherfucker. That shit's gonna kill you. Anyway, um, we need to work on this as a society. We need to work on this as, as like a left. Like, like, in my opinion, this is, in my opinion, the number one most important. Fuck Medicare for all. 
fuck Green New Deal. I, I'm, and I mean this with complete sincerity. Those are important programs, of course. But the number one thing that we should be doing on the left, food and nutrition, education, and help. Number one, do you need to wait for policy change to start eating less added sugar? No, you don't. You can do that today. In fact, you can do it right now. You don't have to wait until later. You can do it right now. Right? Do it right now. You can, like, again, you can do this right now. You don't have to, like, lobby the government for eight years to maybe then get it. Right? You can stop eating added sugar in your food right now. Right? You can get the benefits from that. You feel better. You spend less money on food because you're less addicted to sugar. Right? If you start treating food as a fuel for your body and stop treating uh, food as an addiction. Oh, I got to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dessert, dessert, dessert. You don't need to eat three times every day. You don't even really need to eat two times every day, depending on what you eat. It's totally possible to have one extremely well-balanced meal per day. Personally, I do two. Right? But when you eat better food, you eat less. And when you eat less, you spend less money on food. So this is a number one leftist strategy. We need to fucking eat better. We need to teach our kids to eat better. We need to take chocolate milk out of schools. You know, in school, right? When, when there were kids that, you know, you'd go to school early and uh, you would get a free breakfast if you went to school an hour early. And that was like a little program. And then like, you know, you go there, you get a breakfast. And then that's way if a, if a parent had to go to work earlier or whatever, something, you know, you can get there and you can, I think, I'm not sure if it was free. It might have been one of those things you had to qualify for or whatever. You remember those little fucking cups? Little plastic cups with the Fruit Loops? And then you peel it off? And what kind of milk did you put in there? Was it skim milk? Was it, you know, whole milk? No. It was 2% milk with added sugar in your Fruit Loops. Healthy breakfast healthy breakfast. Oh, or, or if you want to be really healthy, you get the honey nut Cheerios. Oh, it's honey nut Cheerios. It's so healthy. 30 grams of added sugar. And then you pour in the milk, 12 grams of added sugar. And you're already at double the added sugar that you should be having per day as an adult. And you're eight years old. So this is something that I think the left needs to understand. The left needs to be aware of and critically aware of. And again, we're not saying that you ha I'm not saying you have to eat perfectly. I'm not saying you've got to be an avatar of healthy eating. I would like to be. I would like to be an avatar of healthy eating. That's kind of what I want to do next year. Is I want by this time next year, I want to be as healthy as humanly fucking possible. I want to be the healthiest motherfucker you've ever known by this time next year. But you don't have to be the healthiest motherfucker. But you can certainly... You can certainly be healthier than you are today. And that's kind of what I want to do. I want, I want everyone that I know to live a long life. Like, if y'all start dying before me, I'm going to be pissed. I swear to God. Mudjo, if you drop dead... Before the age of 90, I'm going to be mad as hell. I'm going to be really upset if you start dying. If all y'all start dropping like flies, Mr. Freak Glitcher's going to hit the ground screaming. Mud Joe's going to fucking hit the ground not screaming because Mud Joe doesn't know how to speak above a fucking two decibel, you know, volume because you're a freak. That's okay, though. Um... But this is my point, though. And again, you don't have to wait for policy. You don't have to do activist work, you know, every single day. This is something we can do as a left movement. And you don't have to be a vegan. You don't have to be a vegetarian. You can still eat your baby back ribs like a fucking weirdo loser. Right? But you can eat healthier variants of those baby back ribs like a weirdo loser. And that's what we have to understand. And I, this is going to be, I, I swear to God, 
There is a total possibility I will spend the rest of my life on this beat. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not even gonna lie. So, this is like some crazy shit. I have learned, I have, you know, can't put the toothpaste back in the tube on this one. I've done a little bit too much research in the food industry. But uh, anyway, thank you for watching this episode. This is like a longer episode and I almost said nothing of value. So, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, but uh, I hope that you take something away from this. I really do. Because again, what do those, oh yeah, there you go. There you go. You see that box of Raisin Bran at the bottom shelf? I bought that when I, uh, in March, I think it was in April or March, when uh, I was doing coronavirus prepping and I bought a bunch of food. I bought that box of Raisin Bran, right? Why? Because I know that I needed fiber in my diet. That was one thing I knew because I, you know, my chronic illness has to do with, uh, you know, how I process things down in that region. So I was like, yeah, I'll just get some Raisin Bran, right? You know, you want to know how much added sugar is in one serving of that Raisin Bran and why that Raisin Bran has been unopened since April? 13 grams of added sugar per serving. 13 grams of added sugar. And again, when you eat cereal, do you really eat one serving of cereal? Do you really get those extra small bowls and fill them one thirds way? And then weigh the grams. No, you don't. You eat two. You eat three gram. You eat three servings of that shit. You don't eat one fucking serving. I don't like bringing one box of cereal to the food bank would be awkward. But I'd I'd consider it. If I had if I had a bunch of other stuff, I'd consider it. But, um. But again, like, let's be honest, you, you don't, you don't stop at one serving of fucking cereal. Who does that? I'm going to eat cereal. I'm going to stop at one serving. And then, oh, I'm going to get two tablespoons of skim milk. That's how they do the thing on the nutritional label. Oh, if you get two tablespoons of skim milk, two tablespoons of skim milk, who the fuck? But again... The food industry, nutrition labels, it's as much of a racket as the terms of service for parlor. You know, or like any random website that gives you that random long ass terms of service that all of that shit means nothing. Like, nutritional labels are as dumb as that shit. Like, they're meaningless, they mean nothing, and they're useless. And all they're there to do is to divert your attention and confuse the shit out of you. So anyway, I, I hope that you've had fun listening to my TED Talk. Um, I'm sorry for being late today. But, uh, you know, it happens. Um, ooh, God damn it. Um, ooh, when I close my eyes, it's hard to open them again. Uh, anyway... Does anyone have questions? If anyone has questions, let me know and then I'll, I'll peace out. After today's conversation about salad dressing, I looked at the one I use, which just requires vinegar and oil, but its main ingredient is sugar. Well, first of all, Salad dressing is vinegar and oil. Like, let's be honest. Like, come on, witch shunt. Salad dressing is vinegar and oil. Whatever you're adding to that is unnecessary. Um, but I understand this is an Italian packet. What, you got like thyme, basil, oregano, that kind of shit in there. Onion, garlic, right? But also the main ingredient. Ingredients, sugar. If sugar is ever the first ingredient listed, run. <laughs> If sugar is the first ingredient listed, you got to get the hell out of there. And I see this, this label that you posted on the picture. Serving size, one-eighth envelope. One-eighth envelope. And then servings per container, 32. What? And then it says sugars, less than one gram. So people will pick that up. 
their brain will be like, okay, sugar is less than one gram. It's healthy. There's less than a gram of sugar. It's healthy. But servings per container, 32? What? Sugar, salt, sodium citrate, garlic, onions, spice, red bell peppers, carrots, xanthan gum, maltodextrin, parsley, guar gum, natural flavor, soy sauce, wheat, so soybean, salt, citric acid. Yeah, that's some crap. Listening right now and remembering that I used to go to school specifically for free meals because I was poor. Honey buns saved my life. Oh, man. Honey buns, my fucking goddamn. I pronounce it basil because I think it's funny. I know it's most people pronounce it basil, but I pronounce it basil. That's just what I do. Honey bun saved my life back then, probably, but yeah, that's a very sad fact that we live in a society where it seems just so hard to eat healthy. Information helps, and I really like these type of streams. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, again, I never learned any of this. I don't know. It's some fucked up shit. It's some fucked up shit. And again, like, there's a lot of information out there on this, but there's not much information from, like, a leftist perspective. Right, there's not like, I, maybe there's someone out there that's like, you know, like radical vegans, you know, are pretty, pretty honestly, pretty based. I like radical vegans. I know a lot of people are off put by radical vegans, but like, honestly, those are some of the most epic people on the planet. And even they aren't the most like nutritionally focused. They're more so ethical um, treatment of others focused, which is fine. That's fine. But I think as a left, as a left, like, again, I'm a vegetarian. I don't care if you eat meat. I might mock you if we're friends as a joke, right? But I don't really care. Um, we need to give people diets that they can manage. And a lot of those people will eat meat in those diets that they can manage. And we need to be willing and helpful to people. And again, this is stuff we can do right now. We don't have to wait for Congress to, like... I like we I like and we don't have to have sugar taxes. We don't have to do all this dumb bullshit. We need to educate our, our each other. We need to give people a reason to live. We need to give them the facts that school never taught them, that politicians certainly won't tell them. And we need to give them strategies and ways to make food that is just as fast, maybe just as cheap, but slightly healthier and mostly tastes the same. Because again, think of the single mothers out there. Like, I was raised by a single mom. My mom didn't have time to research things. Especially back before YouTube and the internet, right? Oh, really, witch hunt? Yeah, that, yeah, fiber is... Like, my first step to nutrition was figuring out a way to stop uh, intestinal issues. And I found that fiber, which, because I was an American didn't get enough of pretty much fixed all of my problems fiber like fixed almost all and you know what when i was a kid if i would have just eaten a high fiber diet when i was a kid i might have never had intestinal problems i might have never had chronic illness i might have never had to drop out of high school because they didn't believe my doctor's notes did i ever tell you all that story my my high school failed me because they didn't believe the doctor's notes. They thought that we forged all the signatures. And they refused to call the doctor's office to verify them. Because then they would have to be proven wrong. And uh, they just failed me. I failed biology with uh, over a 100 point grade. Because of attendance. There's a fun little story. Biology was my favorite in school. I was really into like... I was really, because I was an edgy atheist and I was really into evolution at the time. Because what I would do after school is I would argue with Christians on YouTube. I know, I know, right? This is when I was like 14. This is actually when I started my YouTube channel. Um, I would argue with Christians on YouTube about evolution. So I would read a bunch of books. Um, and so because I would read a bunch of books about evolution, I knew a lot about biology. And so I passed high school biology 
All right, I failed high school biology with over a 100 point grade. Or around a one. I don't know exactly what it was. I remember like getting a lot of extra credit. Um, but I know, I know at some point, you know, someone's going to call me out and say, actually, you failed with a 94%. It's like, okay. I mean, you know, it's possible. I don't really remember, but I do remember doing a lot of extra credit. Um, but my point is my, my high school is some fucked up shit. And now I'm 24 and argue with Christians. I was actually arguing with Christians on, on Twitter yesterday. But anyway. Um, today is homework. Now this is where I speak to the classroom. Today is homework. Next time you eat, even if it's the food in your house right now. Right? And I'm not saying you have to throw food away. Don't waste your food. Go through it, right? But let's say you've got 80% of your food that's got too much sugar than you may be comfortable with with the information I've just told you. And you've got 20% of the food, right? That's whatever. And you don't want to waste your food. You, don't, you shouldn't have to. Now, if you can afford to, you know, feel free to like give it to someone else or throw it away or whatever, depending on what it is. Um... Just try to eat whatever the healthiest option you can is. And like, next time you go shopping, get a bunch of healthier items. And then maybe you still have some salad dressing with some added sugar in it. Get some salad dressing or make your own salad dressing. Or like, empty that salad dressing into a custom jar and dilute the store-bought salad dressing with healthier stuff. So instead of being like, you know, three grams of added sugar per tablespoon. It's like one at gram. Like, do that kind of stuff, right? You don't need to use original containers for all your food. You don't need to waste all your food. It's all about minimizing harm. It's all Because let's be honest, how much damage have you already done to your body? Right, like, again, my body is probably, there's a lot of parts of my body that are probably never going to be fully functioning again because of the child that I had. So it's like, you probably have got similar situations where like, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you got some damage. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm trying to come up with a hypothetical, but I'm way too fucked up for that. Um, but yeah, just like harm minimization. That's all I'm asking. Harm minimization. Um, bread is a huge one. I've actually been buying a really nice brand of bread called 647, uh, Schmidt brand um it's the healthiest bread i can find in my grocery store it's got seven grams of soluble fiber per slice added into the dough now most bread has zero most whole grain breads have like three grams of fiber maybe four um this bread has soluble corn fiber added to the bread which is actually you know soluble corn fiber is pretty decent um and so then it's also got some extra protein in it. It's pretty good. Um, so, you know, look for that. It's about two bucks a loaf. So it's a little bit more expensive than the 60 cent white bread. But again, it goes a long way. It goes a long way. And again, my big thing was like, my big thing was I'm, I'm poor. Like I have very little money, right? And so it's like, I understand the 80 cent white bread is appealing because it's half the price. I get it, right? But buy the more expensive and healthier bread and eat less of it. Eat less of it. Because I know a lot of instances, like people in my family, which are my, you know, I would love to help my family get out of this, but you know, uh, that's a whole nother, I'm not going to pontificate that in public. Um... But, like, there's people in my family, you know, when they make something that uses bread, they'll have, like, you know, two burgers instead of one, two sandwiches instead of one, and that's fine, right? I'm not necessarily decrying that. But, like, get the more expensive bread, the healthier bread, have one sandwich, maybe have slightly more ingredients on it on the one sandwich. So you use less bread because, you know, the bread's more expensive. Use less of it. It's more nutritious. It's healthier for you. If you use less of healthier food because you need less, you don't need that much, right? 
it's not in the end it's not more expensive now again if you were to do this minimization with the white bread obviously that would be cheaper in the end but a lot of people i know they don't do this minimization right they don't they buy the white bread because it's the cheapest for large amounts of quantity and quantity is first and foremost with people that have food addiction problems um everyone in my family has a food addiction problem i have a food addiction problem even if i know about it and can manage it i still have a food addiction problem like when people in my family order fast food which they do frequently and i like smell like burger king downstairs i my brain tells me to go downstairs and eat all of it that's what my brain tells me and i haven't had burger king in yonks like the last time i had burger king was like someone in my family bought one of the meatless impossible whoppers for me just so like you know because they were out and they got stuff and they're like i'm gonna be nice for andrea and i was like okay but like i haven't like you know eaten burger king fries i haven't had like a pig but i just even the scent of that style of fast food because again i was raised on fast food and ice cream my mom every like you know friday and then monday and then tuesday right and then like it just started being almost every day of the week we'd go to burger king because there was one right next to my house when i was growing up so like she'd pick me up from daycare um after school daycare we'd go to burger king and we'd go home so it's like whenever someone in my house comes in the front door and i live on the second floor right i can smell it and it creates a chemical it's like it's like an alcoholic like smelling the fumes of like an alcohol it's like you know it, i my brain just instantly like my body i start craving it and it's like dude what the fuck right and i'm gonna have to deal with that for the rest of my life so throwing that out there america's fucked anyway thank you for watching everybody i will talk more about this subject in later episodes hopefully you enjoyed the more long form session and uh hopefully i can make your life better and then you can make the lives of others better and then when you do make the lives of others better you can tell them to subscribe to me and then also you can give me money when you save money on your diet let's be honest right you cut 10 bucks off your grocery list because you got less food with added sugar 10 bucks I deserve it. Let's be honest. I deserve it. I missed out on two weeks of YouTube income. Just throwing that out there. There's an idea. Christmas is coming. Anyway, thank you for watching, everyone. I love you all. Have a good one. Et cetera. I'm about to be 34 and I have no family. I'm about to be 34 and I have no family. I'm about to be 34 and I have no family. And he's like this, and we were, ah, ah, I need water, help me, I need water, help. And he's right, this is on live television. He tweet, that was a, an opinion of somebody, and that was a retweet, he tweet, he tweet, he tweet, he tweet, retweet, 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 he tweet, 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 retweet. I'll put it out there. He tweet, retweet, he tweet. That was a an opinion of somebody. Retweet, retweet, he tweet, retweet, 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 he tweet, he tweet, retweet, retweet, he tweet. That was a an opinion of somebody. No good. No good. You're dying. That's true. And you have it is what it is. Well, you have to understand, the first time I ever heard of Black Lives Matter, they were chanting, pigs in a blanket, talking about police. Pigs, pigs, talking about our police. Pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. They had a very bad original concept. Well, I gotta go. Let me respond. There's a lot to respond to here. Let's get something straight. You shouldn't be disappointed. It was carried out poorly. What I've done so far is more than anybody else has done this far. Okay? Number one. Number two. I mean what I say when I say it. And the cover-up was one of the worst in the history of cover-ups.
I mean what I say when I say it. I'm the only person who's ever run on three platforms that I... Very simple. Bad deal should have never been thought of. I was told could not possibly win the election, and I never ceased from it. One was on restoring the soul of this country. Somebody really messed up. Because of what I saw happen in Charlottesville. And they had the worst cover-up ever. That was it. No one else was talking about it. The world and where it should have stopped is at the deal standpoint, where they thought about it. Because whoever thought of that idea, I think is in big trouble.